Hi! A frequent discussion surrounding the New World Close Beta was if you should invest purely into Constitution, if that's the best way to go for a variety of reasons. Yesterday we opened that can of worms and looked into some PvP scaling as well as the scaling for a weapon that only scales with one attribute. Today we'll be focusing on weapons that scale with two attributes, like for example the hatchet, spear, rapier or musket. And as I said yesterday, it will get a little bit more complicated, but I hopefully can make it somewhat understandable. Before we get started, one very important thing. Throughout this video I will mention strength a lot and dexterity sometimes. This is equivalent to the primary scaling stat of your weapon and the secondary scaling stat of your weapon. Now I'm not going to explain the entire process of how these numbers came to be again in today's video. If you want to know that or if you want to know more about weapons that scale with a single attribute, then please refer back to yesterday's video which will be linked at the top and also otherwise at the end of the video. Along with the full method for leveling weapons with two attributes, we'll also be talking about other reasons why constitution may still be favored or was at least favored during the beta. And now into the numbers we go. Much like yesterday, a huge shout out to Deathwolf for finding the formula to find this baseline increase, which explains how these numbers came to be. I used the hatchet here, which scales with strength as its primary attribute and dexterity as its secondary. You can replace this again with any other weapon, for example with a rapier this would be dexterity and intelligence. Now for a moment please use your best tunnel vision and look at strength and constitution only. Now maybe you remember I tested the damage on a live target in game, thank you 7th for being my dummy there, and we ended up needing less hits when building high strength and fighting a target with high constitution than the other way around with a player with high constitution attacking a player with high strength and low constitution, which indicated that strength would possibly be stronger than constitution, which initially didn't make sense, especially because we were using a hatchet. Now this was roughly in the 200 to 250 area, so let's just say we're testing the percentage values here at 250 strength versus 250 constitution. What you can see here that even on the hatchet, up until that point, investing everything into strength gives you a higher percentage increase than everything into constitution by roughly 13%. What you can also see is that when you invest 500 points, constitution and strength basically scale the same. That doesn't mean that they have the same scaling method though. Strength just scales higher initially and constitution scales higher later and if you added more points then constitution would also still scale higher. And now we can look into dexterity again but we have a problem here. The numbers that we have here don't actually work for us because they assume that we don't have any points invested into strength, just the baseline of 5 dexterity. So this would only be relevant if for whatever reason you only want to invest into your secondary attribute, which really doesn't make sense unless we're talking about using a specific gem. Instead, what we want to find about is the perfect order to mix between constitution, strength and dexterity. And Deswell found a way to do that. Using the numbers that we had found in the last video, they were able to create a mixed stat essentially that would always use the optimized scaling to achieve the highest possible increase at any point between strength and dexterity. The resulting point investment looks as follows. You begin by investing 100 points into your primary damaging attribute, in this case strength. Then you put 100 points into constitution. Then you put another 50 points into strength and another 50 points into constitution. So we are at 150 points each and no points in dexterity. Now you invest 50 points into constitution again, so you add 200, and 50 points into dexterity. Then 50 points into constitution again and 50 points into dexterity again. This puts you at 250 points in constitution, 150 points in strength and 100 points in dexterity then another 50 points into constitution and another 50 into strength. So now you'd be at 300, 200 and 100 points respectively. At this point you could go on and invest more points into constitution for maximum efficiency, but realistically you're going to look for the higher tier perks from strength and dexterity instead, because the increased difference is not that major once again. You can see all the hypothetical points here, but I would not recommend following them beyond 300 points at all. What you can also see here is the total scaling for the damage is once again the same as it is for using a weapon that only uses one attribute, so it adds up to the same amount in the end. 
So what we find in general is that the overall distribution somewhat resembles a 50-50 split, excluding the fact that you have to split between dexterity and strength to some degree. But there is still a problem, and that is using multiple weapons that scale differently. Like, for example, the spear and the hatchet, which both scale with dex and strength, but the different ways around. Or using a weapon that scales with intelligence, along with a weapon that scales with dexterity and intelligence. Now we can't fully cover that today and we'll cover it in the future, but I wanted to point out this issue at this point, just so you're aware that this is still a factor in it. In this context we also need to look at intelligence and focus gems, which are a different beast altogether. That video will be coming very soon, so please consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you want to learn about that. And that's not the only factor playing in here either, because you have other things that can contribute, like for example, somebody only wearing light armor and having a 20% damage increase, which sometimes is a little bit offset with certain other perks. And then you could have the other player, for example, have some damage mitigation on their equipment. So there are still a lot more factors beyond this that can ultimately affect the outcome. But still, between the numbers that we found yesterday and today, you may be wondering, if strength was actually pretty good all along, or if the primary attributes were good all along, and the secondary were too, and constitution was too, why was the focus so heavily on constitution? And I have a few explanations for that. Now the first one is for hatchet users specifically, but hatchet was very popular in the beta because of the relatively easy and quick leveling, and that is that berserk scaled with your health percentage-wise it seems. Therefore, the effective health return on that was massive, and I'm honestly kind of expecting that they will change that to a flat healing. On that note, by the way, Deathwool had the interesting thought that it can technically be a bit better to go a little bit more into damage and less into constitution, because you're getting flat healing from health potions. So if you're in a scenario where you're using health potions, then you effectively get a little bit more in a trade. But that's a niche thought, especially if we're looking at it from a, for example, dual perspective where you usually don't use potions. Another factor for constitution being so valued were the very strong attribute perks. The 250 constitution perk especially, which decreased your damage taken on the initial hit when you have full health by 80%, was insanely strong in PvE, but also in PvP as long as you had a healer, because you would often just get very frequent reductions. Also, the 150 points perk was bugged, giving you permanent 10% damage reduction. I demonstrated that in this video, if you haven't seen that yet. What's more, Constitution has super high scaling on low levels. I'm not actually 100% sure how this works in PvP just yet, we couldn't really figure that out during the beta, so that'll have to wait, or maybe it's fixed by the time uh, we get to launch. But this is something worth keeping in mind, that for lower level players, the impact of constitution may have felt much different from the way it feels if you're specking into it on level 60 and since all the comparisons were on level 60 that is something worth keeping in mind. What's also very nice is that it allows you to switch between different weapons without having to respec for them and that was especially something that people wanted to do in the beta, they wanted to try out different things. As long as you have constitution everything will deal relatively low damage but you still have a ton of health. Otherwise, you have to respec every time you switch between weapons depending on what attribute they scale with. Also, just one combatant specking into it leads to a more drawn out fight. And this can be beneficial, especially when you're a newer player, because it allows for more ability rotations. And I think a lot of players, when they're starting out, rely a lot on their abilities and obviously sometimes they will miss them. So it's nice for them to get a second chance to use them in a fight and maybe get something out of them. This is obviously also true for the enemy, but it generally it gives you more room for error and more room for practice as well. Especially when playing Wars, it was also almost impossible to not at least spec a little bit into Constitution anyways. You were running against musket users and mages who would try to bombard you from a distance, and if you had no Constitution at all, you would just get blown up way 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 too quickly. No matter how much damage you're able to do, it doesn't really matter, especially as a melee, if you can't even get to the enemy without dying first. As such, especially if you look into play PvP, I don't think a certain baseline of constitution will ever go away. Obviously there will be variety in the split, especially depending on how the attribute perks are as well, but I think you will still have at least some points, or at least a hundred points I would say in constitution, in most builds. There are arguments for specking more heavily into damage as well. As I already mentioned, health pods give you back a bigger percentage of your health. 
Damage perks are often preferable for a variety of reasons, they just provide you with some very nice benefits if you're not looking to tank. And you also get faster clear in PvE and a shorter time to kill in PvP, which can sometimes be important. This can for example especially be important if you're trying to destroy enemy siege weaponry as well. Here it's very good to just have high damage to get rid of the siege weaponry as quickly as possible, because that siege weaponry is probably going to deal more damage than you otherwise either way. And one benefit that we most certainly shouldn't overlook both in dungeons as well as in wars is the increased AoE damage. Because looking at a one-on-one -on -one scenario is what we did so far and here you have this like back and forth between the health and the damage. But if you're suddenly hitting three enemies with your damage then you're getting a lot more out of your investment which would also be an argument for investing into damage more. As such there are still quite a few things to consider for damage but at the moment there are a lot of reasons to go into constitution. Now, as I said, we still have to look at what may be an exception to the rule, which are weapons with int gems. That is something we'll do in the very near future, so if you'd like to see that, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Also, I have a ton of info to prep you for the open beta this week, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned as well. Once again, special thanks to Desvul, as well as a big thanks to the other theory crafters on the Discord, links down below, that all contributed to this in one way or another. And also a big thanks to those of you who share this video or rewatch it for extra watch time that massively helps out my channel. I hope to see you for the next one soon so we can dig deep into the craziness of gems. Thanks for watching, Duke Sloth, out.